Hey, what's up guys? Sunday, I wanted to make my video before the sun goes down, which happens at three o'clock now. So let's get into it. <laughs> I wanted to make this video about prospecting. One of you guys asked me, what's my process? And um, I made this video about eight months, six months ago. So it's been a while. And since that time, I've tried out multiple things. And so I'll be able to give you guys a good, you know, um, idea on a few different uh, places you can look, people who are highly likely to buy SEO. So just want to let you know that, I mean, at that time I was strictly using Home HomeAdvisor um, and since then I, I, I you know, I, I played around with a few different things and there was actually a period of time when I stopped using Home Advisor and I was making fun of myself for only using Home Advisor in the past and then now I'm at a point where I'm back to using Home Advisor again. So bit of journey, I'll share with you guys why that happened and also I want to actually kind of like break down in order of importance which places is like which mediums you can use that's highest likely to buy SEO. All right, let's get into it. This will probably save some of you a lot of time. Um, all right, now before I get into the order of importance, right, I want to do a little bit, uh, you know, a quick rant on why prospecting is important. So let's see, it kind of goes like this. I think Alex Becker used to say this. It's something, the example he used to give is something like, um, guys, if you're selling hot dogs and you're, you, you're in front of, you know, you, you set up your stand in front of people who are hungry and just coming out of the movies or something, um, you're going to get sales, even if your hot, hot dog isn't that good. What he was basically pointing at is if you're in front of people who are, who need your service and see the value in your service, you're going to be able to get sales, even if the product isn't good, even if your sales process is just decent. And that's something I remember from a long time ago um, in the beginning, but I never used and um, until now. <laughs> uh, but basically what I found out over time is there's certain parts in the business where you can make a little tweak and it changes everything, right? For example, let's say you're sending out emails and you're just um, getting people to get on a phone and you close them. Naturally, this is where most of the industry revolves around. You know, what's your email? What's your technique? Um, and when you get on the sales side, what is it you guys are saying? What's the magic sentence you said to him when it made the client say yes? That's where the rubber meets the road. It's the close. It's where the right before the money gets transferred. So naturally, that's where all the emotion is. That's where everybody's, um, you know, like, like kind of like putting attention to. But if you look at companies that are that are closing a lot and stuff like that, you'll recognize, um, and this is not just in the SEO industry, this is business in general across the board. You'll see that a lot of the, like a lot of it, a lot of the success starts right from the beginning at the root where they're spending their, like how they're choosing who to even go after, okay? And the way I put it here is the more likely they're to buy, the more aggressive you can be. And this is another concept that goes hand in hand with what I just said. And basically what that is, is, is like this. Let's say you're targeting um, plumbers or dentists, let's say. Okay, from last video, that's on my head. Let's say you're targeting dentists. And let's say you did like a two-step char characteristics, meaning like you chose, okay, these five cities are good, I can serve, um, and then, uh, and they're dentists. That's just like a two level deep, let's say, right? At least some kind of um, breakdown you're doing. Now you have some kind of uh, people that you're going to be targeting and you get everybody in that city and you're sending them cold emails. Okay. That's one thing, right? But if you do the same thing to people who are not just dentists, but not just in that city, but let's say you have three to four other things, characteristics that they have to fit into. Now, it's kind of hard for me to think of those things for the dentist industry, but an example I can give you in, in the roofing industry is for example, like if they are, if they're tired of what they're doing, like if they're frustrated. So everybody in home advisor, <laughs> that's like, that's like a synonym with that. Um, if you go a little bit more deep in, like when I was doing the franchises, it's, it's, it was based off a tip my client gave me. They, my client told me that for, the, uh, for roofers who have full vinyl wraps on their cars, they are good to target. He told me that, you know, people who have like, like half wrap, like, you know, their cars, they put a paint job around it to advertise their business. If they're doing it for half the car, it's anywhere from 650 to $750, which is a lot of roofers do it. It's cool. But to do the whole car, it's $3,000. And there is not much clear data in the industry that that brings a positive return on investment. So it spells out companies which are doing full wrap for all their cars. It spells out that those are the type of companies that are a bit more reckless with their money, right? They are, um, 
how do I put it? Not just they they have the money to spend, but they might be uh, in in a position to do what it takes to get their name out, right? They're more on the branding side as well. These you'll see. I mean, I'm going all over the place, but. And to be truthful, the best clients a lot of times is people who are not just looking for the leads. Obviously, they want a return investment, but they also have an ego in place, right? And those cars, those guys who are doing those kind of stuff and they want to be those loud guys who has most cars and a big crew always around the place, they kind of want to be the number one top dog when it comes to Google search as well. So I had a conversation with my client in that, about that before I went in. That was an example. See, I can give a lot better examples in the construction. But let's go to dentist, okay? Even though I don't know shit about it. Um, let's say you had four or five, just like, you know, similar to how I said about roofing, but you, you knew about the industry and you know, like, you know, three, four more tips and you categorize and made a list based on that category. What will happen is in this side where you had just dentist and five cities, you might come up with 500 dentists. On this side, you might just come up with 20 or 30. So what it will allow you to do to these 20 and 30 is be a lot more aggressive. How? 500 businesses, if these 500 businesses, if they don't open my email, if I call, if they don't pick up, do you think it'll make worthwhile for me to call them and put it on my calendar the next three days I wanna call them? If they don't pick up, I'm gonna go back and put a form on their website. If they don't reply to the form, I'm gonna go back and message them on Facebook. If they don't reply to the thing, I'm gonna call back another number I can find. Would that make sense? Maybe not, because it's freaking 500 businesses. I might just call all of them and go through and see who I can get interest from, right? That's because I have so many to call. But if I have just 20 people and I know these guys spend money, they have the money, they're looking for something in the market and they fit my criteria so well, I might go overboard with trying to get their attention with all the mediums I have available to them because there's only 20. I can put all my attention to these 20 guys because I know these are the guys who have the money. So. Understand the power in this because it can put the funnel and narrow your focus a lot more, which will give you a lot more uh, permission to go full force in. All right. That's why um, prospecting is so powerful. All right. Having that said, Jesus Christ, it takes me seven minutes to do a definition. All right, guys. I've been trying to make it a thing to um, try to get to a point a little bit faster and not get as ranty on the video so I don't bore you guys to death. <laughs> But um, okay, let's get into it. So first thing here is AdWords. Now, I don't need a bit, I don't know if this needs explanation why AdWords is number one. But if you look at like what you would possibly want for somebody, the characteristics them to have for you to sell SEO to, AdWords almost has every single thing in it right from the bat. Right? Do they have money? Yes, because AdWords is not cheap. No matter what industry you're going into, AdWords is never the cheapest thing in town, right? You a lot of times it's the most expensive. For roofing, the clicks are twenty to thirty bucks. Um, for lawyers and everything, is you know it's just seventy dollars per click and up up from there. Um, so meaning it's pretty easy to dictate if somebody's running AdWords and they're that's one of their main forms of lead generation. They're at least spending even in the construction industry two to three thousand dollars to get a good amount of calls. Um, and if you break down the amount of calls and then, you know, price per phone call, if they're tracking those numbers, then it gets even easier to really show them what kind of, um, figures you are getting for, um, with your service, right? Now that's just one way. The other things that AdWords completely, um, you know, like check marks, as soon as you see somebody who's running AdWords is things like, do they believe in digital marketing? A lot of times there's people who have the money, but it can still be hard to bridge that gap. Like I said, there's different levels in the client um, prospecting bar. And it's, money's not just the only thing, it's one of the biggest ones, right? If they don't have the money, they just can't afford you, no matter how much they love your service, right? That's just given. But after that, there are a lot of people who are doing a lot of, they're running you know, big businesses, they're not doing any kind of digital marketing. And you usually think that, okay, this is a good prospect. It, it is a good place to look at, but not all of them are, are good because you'd find out soon after that they would hold you to the same kind of metrics that they hold their other forms of lead generation. Maybe right now they do home advisor or something else. They will try to compare apples to apples, right? Hey, I get from home advisor when I spend a thousand, I get 50 leads. From SEO, I have to spend a thousand for six months, then it's not guaranteed. They, they would have all that kind of question, right? 
again, I'm going on a little bit of rant, but this is going to basically give you an idea of why these other ones fit in the same kind of spectrum. And I'm just starting with AdWords. When somebody runs AdWords, it's basically they, don't, they not only have the money, but they already fully believe in digital marketing. And they usually understand uh, at least a general ballpark of how many calls they're getting per how much money they're spending. And another thing big, which is huge, if they're already spending like, let's say two, three thousand dollars on AdWords, right now the sale is no longer anymore why you should you know spend two grand thousand dollars three thousand dollars to spend me a uh, uh, pay for me it's just a shift you're making you all you have to sell them on is hey look you currently you're paying for ads here and you pay you stay here if you don't pay you'll be gone uh, but i'm trying to bring you here here you grow your asset and you you own your website and this is going to be an asset to your business and this is what we grow that that's the shift you have to make. It's a much easier shift in the sale compared to, um, you know, right now everything's they're, they're doing something completely different and you want to show them enough value. So they start spending two, three grand on SEO. All right. So that's why I put AdWords at the ultimate best position. The only downside of AdWords is because there's not a lot of people who run AdWords per city. All right. So having that said, let's go into home advisor. Um, one more thing in AdWords before I move on. If you want to know who's running AdWords in other cities, so for example, like if you if you're searching, let's say like I do like you know um I don't know plumber plumber near uh, plumber in let's say like California, okay. The only reason I see these guys' ads is because they're running the ads wrong, right? They, I'm not supposed to see a guy's ad who's running um, plumbing in, Cal let me just make sure there's California. There might be around me as well. Uh, and they just caught me from the word plumber. But you get the point. If they're, at the, if they're in California and I see their ad, their ads are being run in the wrong way because they didn't target it properly. They, they're losing money because anybody from the United States can now click on their ad, cause them to lose money. But there's no chance for me to ever be their customer because I'm searching from like thousands of miles away or like 500. I don't know geography, but you get the point, right? But what I was trying to say is if you want to know um, a good way to know all the cities where people are running AdWords is go to this link in Bright Local, local search results. Um, you type in the word plumber near me, let's say, and then you can do the, um, what is it? I don't know the state. Fuck, let's see if this works. Can't think of a state. There. Mr. Ruder and Take Cloud. These are not the results I'm getting from right here. This is a result Bright Local just showed me from searching. If I was to search from somewhere in California, do the state, it'll be a little bit better. Um, but this is a good way for you to be able to see where they're running at. So this was, you know, it's pretty huge. Um, use that tool. All right, let's move on. Um, Okay, use location search to find out. Okay, next, Home Advisor. So this is going to be a pretty long portion of this. <laughs> home Advisor, I started off, my very first way to get clients was Home Advisor, right? I started calling them and, um, you know, there's a period of time where I was sending video audits, everyone down the line. It was a massive waste of time, but I was just using brute force to try to get attention, right? Like there was no prospecting, no fake video emails, like no fake video audits, just everybody on home advisor are just making the video and sending it to them. I would, a lot of people would not even open the email and I was spending 15, 20 minutes per video audit to send it to them, right? That's how I was doing at the beginning. Um, after some time I left home advisor, which I'll get into, but all in all, Everything being said, in the home services industry, home advisor is still a massive good place to prospect because these are people who are spending X amount of dollars to get a lead and that gets shared with at least five other people. They got into lawsuits because they said five and they've been, um, you know, basically getting caught, getting into like, you know, giving it to eight, 10 people. But at least on the books, right off the bat, that lead gets shared with five different people, a paper lead. So a lot of times for the contractor, even before, even when he gets the lead, right? Even if he's like calls it five minutes later, it might be too late for him to win that. And he will have to pay for it. So naturally people are 
really pissed off. Like most people in Home Advisor, they hate it. And even the people who are really successful at it, there's some people who I call like Home Advisor rock stars. They, they, they don't have a Google presence. A lot of times they don't even have a website, but they have like 150, 70 reviews in Home Advisor. They love it. They, they built their system all around that kind of business model. And um, the point is people in Home Advisor is, is, is waiting for an opportunity, even after they have, even if they're successful and it's working decently well, they have to be at a search uh, churn and burn mode of like, you know, always scrambling to get the lead, um, always rushing to people to get the bid. Um, a lot of times lowering their prices for their service. So for roofers, they're, you know, keep on pr pricing it down so they can win the job. They hate it. Okay. It gives us a massive advantage to just come in and show them, hey, you guys are doing this. Well, look what, you know, what's going on with some of the people I'm working with. Okay, they're getting this many calls, they're spending this much money, um, this is what the calls are like, it's live, it's only coming to you. It's just, again, pretty no-brainer how our service, when done well, is so much superior than something like a Home Advisor. So that's why I'm putting them at the second place. And um, before moving again, let me give you guys a tool which you can use to find out how much people are paying in your industry if they're on Home Advisor. So, Go to this link and refresh it twice. No, I got it wrong. There, this one. Go to this link here and refresh it twice. And just pick a city. Let's say like, I don't know, I'll do roofing. Seattle. Um, I was looking at Seattle, but okay, let's do, um, I don't know, anywhere. Let's do, let's do California here, going with the other information. Um, I don't freaking know these cities. This is Los Angeles, big city. Okay. This is the most common type of roofing there is. Like if you're, you know, driving down the road, most houses around you has like this kind this thing, asphalt shingle roofing, right? This costs them. So people in California, the whole, the contractors, the roofers are paying $123 per lead that gets shared with five other people. So think about that. 10 calls and they're at $1,200. I mean, 10 leads, they're $1,200, even, even if they don't get the job. So if I was to call a roofer in that area, imagine how easy that would make it. Um, so use this tool, this link, it's, huge, it's, it's really good. It's all their industries right here. Um, um, you know, basically, and you can just choose a city and then you'll be able to find exactly how much people are paying for, oops, let's see, fireplace, $60. These are high price shit, man. Look at this. This is not even that like competitive of, an, of a niche. So this is actually a good way to even do niche research and I should have probably put it in my last video as well, but you get the point, right? Really good way to understand how, what the market is paying for right now and hating it. That's beautiful right there, right? They're paying for this shit and then they're hating it. 90% of the people are pissed off being here, all right? Okay, that's why I put Home Browser, use the link. Just put it on the description, right? All right, I don't know my eyes hurting. Okay, next part I put Yelp, um, not, not the best. I would only go for the people who are running ads on Yelp. Um, again, it just tells me that these guys are looking to try out something even though it's not working. Meaning like, um, not even that it's not working, they don't know it's working. They're looking to try out something that they, they're they not sure if it's working. Because if, you, if, if they're contracted and they're running Yelp ads, um, most probably it's not doing them jack shit, right? The best time to run Yelp ads when it actually works well is the with the credits you get for free. When you make the account, sometimes you can trigger the free credits you get for $300. And if you get that for your client, use it. It's good. You know, it's going to do something to get some traffic in and um, create some buzz, especially if it's a new business that you want to get some movement going. Great. But after that, don't spend a penny on Yelp. And if they are, they're trying it out. And people who are trying out advertising, even though it's not working possibly really that well, is again, ties back to the, some of the characteristics of AdWords. Obviously, it's not as expensive, but you can target the people who are running ads. Thumbtack, now we're getting down to more of, you know, normal level um, people, right? These are not people who are spending money as much anymore. Not to say Thumbtack is free, but 
Thumbtack, in my experience, is hit and miss. I think it's going to be better in Thumbtack for um, businesses that are a bit more similar to bathroom remodeling, uh, maybe solar companies, like I said in my last video. Um, I forgot the characteristics that they fall in. Oh, non-emergency. If they're a little bit less emergency, Thumbtack works well. Thumbtack is really great for remodeling companies, um, things that take a while to do. Maybe it's a big dollar, but a bit more on the luxury side. I'm just spitting out of my top of my head right now because that's ex examples I'm giving exactly from my experience. There's so many other industries in Thumbtack. I have no idea how, it, how you know, exactly how it gets affected in there. But if there's a certain group of people who use Thumbtack. They are, they happen to be, they, they're usually a bit more sophisticated for lack of better terms, right? Generally speaking in, in the construct, you know, in contractors in, in, in general, um, you know, like, like if you're talking to an HVAC guy who's complaining about home advisor, he's going to be kind of, for lack of better words, again, rough around the edges. They're just trying to, you know, start their shit, seeing what works. Uh, they're just one calls. They're not that sophisticated. Again, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, looking down on them, but generally speaking in Thumbtack, people who are working that that platform to a good degree, they have a good amount of reviews in it. They have, they are usually a bit more savvy on the uh, digital marketing side, right? You might be able to, if you're more of a technical sales guy in SEO, uh, you might have some success in Thumbtack. All right. Yellow pages. All right. Okay. So yellow pages, um, I, I put them in the suck side, but the video, oh yeah. Okay. This is what I wanted to point out. Yellow page is good if you target the people who are on YouTube. So if you guys don't know, Yellow Pages has actually a page on um, YouTube, right? It's this shit right here. These are people who are spending, the last time I checked, I think like 500 bucks per month for this damn video. So look at it. Chiropractors, nurseries, contractors, roofers, plumbers, like all industries, really like all kinds of industries. These are all people who are spending monthly to get this video here. It's retarded, but it's a sign that they have, um, you know, they have money to spend and they're, they're, they're really good, um, you know, candidates to start at. Now, I'm not sure how saturated this is. I know that, um, you know, this probably known to a lot more people and it's, it's, it's a good idea for you to keep some kind of tracker. You know, like if I was to use this, um, now I'll, I'll try to keep someone a tracker where when a roofer comes on the day he comes on I want to reach out to him like before anybody else does right if this is saturated I'm not too sure how saturated this is, but definitely I'll take a look here All right And lastly what I put is um directory I think that's the yellow page directory um, No, no, that's the yellow pages. Oh The offline directory, okay the other side, okay, this is a whole another section of its own, is physical prospecting, right? This is probably where you would not see much SEOs, not much, um, you know, online advertisers using this method. This is the realm where you're going to be finding all other types of businesses, right? You guys understand that, pro like, when it comes to competition, right, it's really relative to the medium you're using. SEOs think that, well, the, all the competition is in keyword research and people who are ranking for those industry in, in the first page of Google and stuff like that. It's not the case. There's all kinds of people targeting your exact clients and they have no idea about what kind of search volume they have. They just know from advertising they're doing on billboards, on, on physical books. For example, book like this, hard copy book like this, Yellow Pages, there's people advertising throughout this shit. A lot of these pages, this thing can cost at the minimum $500. I heard it's a thousand for a full page. If this guy was pasted on both sides, I think it's like 1500 or something per month. So imagine this, this is a lot of shit that people are spending money on again, on stuff that doesn't work. It's it, it, it you could, it should be pretty easy for you to at least, uh, be able to show them why, what you have can beat what they're doing right here. Um, before I move on, there is a way you can call up the receptionist and tell them to send you. I mean, this book is free, by the way, right? It's free where you're, if you're somewhere in the United States, it's free. You can get a copy sent to you if you're not in that city um, for 50 bucks per city. So again, you want to do some research on which cities you want to target. Let's say you get a you know list of like 10 cities. That's 500 bucks. Sounds like a lot, but you're going to get very 
a good list of people, especially if you're not niche down, you're gonna get a lot of businesses which are spending a lot of money that you can target, all right? Okay, the, the one I put here it just sucks. I was gonna you know, elaborate on the list of people that doesn't work, but um, there's no reason for me to you know, go through all the places that I tried that didn't work really well. Um, like for example, one of the places was Yellow Pages Online, like the normal Yellow Pages, like um, Plumber Near Me, Yellow Pages. I mean, nobody types yellow pages. That's the reason why it sucks. But if you look at like the normal directory, online directory of yellow pages, this is like the dog shit of like <laughs> uh, prospecting. The, these guys suck dick. A lot of these phone numbers don't even, um, don't even, um, they're, they're not even active. I don't know why. Like yellow pages, I'm not saying the contractors suck. I'm saying yellow pages online is a very bad platform, uh, period. Homeowners don't go there, I think, and I don't think even contractors are there properly listed. So don't waste your time there. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it. Hope that makes sense. Hope I was able to give you guys some um, you know, solid methods and mindset to go about prospecting. Take it seriously. Um, like I said, it's one of those things where you improve it up by a bit and it improves your entire process of your business. Peace.